Welcome back to the Ink Sync. I am Annie. I'm Kaylee. And this is the publishing podcast for the rest of us. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> we did it. So today we are actually going to be bringing you an episode from our archives. The episode we recorded last year around this time, actually directly around this I think time. Just around, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it yeah. must have been. Um, sometime between May and October, clearly. <laughs> So half um, the year. Yeah, right. Half the, half At the some year. point around this six month period in history, we uh recorded an episode on Dracula Daily. Yeah, we did. It was great. Um we thought that was super cool. And after a very short relatively short break, I guess, um, the a Substack provider contributor content creator is back at it again so we were hoping to just re-release it and see you know who you know who was interested because it's such a a fun idea and like there's so uh, there's just an eternal interest in dracula of course obviously you know it's open open fertile ground at this point um i still have not seen the newest uh, nick cage movie and i'm really sad about that honestly because it was out of theaters apparently got like panned critically but like i don't trust critics at this point so i've heard my people that i trust thought it was really funny and great so i'm gonna have to find a way to get a hold of it yeah, that's the new Renfield movie. For those of you who haven't heard of or seen it, it is Nicholas Holt playing Renfield and Nick Cage playing Dracula. I can only imagine the amount of scenery that gets chewed upon. <laughs> I'm really excited. It looked really funny. Um, and I love Nicholas Holt. Of course. So while we go see that, we're going to play this episode for you on Dracula Daily. Welcome back to the Ink Sync. I'm Kaylee. I'm Annie. And today we are covering fan engagement on Tumblr. We're covering vampires and cereals. Not the breakfast. <laughs> this is not a Count Chocula fan <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Although. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Annie, what are we talking about today? We're talking about Dracula Daily. Yeah. I'm so I have to say, the guy who came up with this. Genius. brilliant absolutely so i was trying to describe it to someone and i was just like the fact that this had not happened before is a travesty and the fact that it's happening now is incredible this guy is absolutely a genius brilliant like so we excited. live in we live in some times fam and it's happening right now and mm -hmm. you get to experience it all firsthand yes i mean you know i love a good lit meme and they are just it's breeding they're oh, breeding it's for sure. so good we should do like a compilation of all the great dracula daily mm. memes 100 percent. you should definitely we should collect them and put them up on like insta we or something. should you've got like you, you've got the we do that's the format yeah, right I there put, i put memes up on our instagram girl and like, like your mom liked my ream on instagram one time. remember that time we talked about dick fight island because that's the one my mom found so and then liked it and then commented on the next one and i was just like oh no <laughs> I messaged Kaylee and I was like, I just put this meme up and then your mom followed us and I don't know what to do about it. And then and like I was three just like, weeks nah, later, I was like, fine. she liked the meme, Kaylee. What it do I do? It took three weeks for that bomb to hit. <laughs> anyway, so now Kaylee's mom knows about Yaoi Manga and we're all just going to hide under rocks forever. <laughs> it's just where we live in the world now. It's bad. It's Nope. It nope. Crazy. You know what? We learned, we learned a lot about... <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> How you doing, Kaylee? I'm great, Annie. Like this, I just want to be clear. I read the book a long time oh, ago. Sure. I'm not currently getting this blasted to my inbox. So I have been engaging with Dracula Daily through the fandom, and it's <laughs> been a delight to see people losing their minds on the internet just in something that's not that's totally harmless and silly. Oh yeah. So how have you been? I've been great. I messaged you. I was like, I want to find something kind of chill. For this week, and I was not anticipating how not chill yeah. <laughs> the world was about Dracula Daily. Girl, I mean, I, I guess it depends on your definition of chill. It's very wholesome, I will say. Everybody's vibing real hard and like the best way. Yeah. I would never have thought that my arch literary nemesis, Jonathan Harker, would be described as the internet's bestie in my lifetime. But here we are. And I, for the record, don't like Jonathan Harker as a character. He's one of my least favorite characters. I will say, uh, so talking about Dracula Daily today, I do want to point out Dracula Daily is free. 
It's on Substack. If you are interested in it, please go sign up. Right now, the Dracula Daily feed has not gone past the first couple chapters. So Van Helsing hasn't been introduced. There's time. You can get into it before Van Helsing. Quincy has not been introduced. Get in before There's you... a gap right now, honestly. So now is not a bad time to... Anyway, jumping into Dracula Daily. Dun, dun, dun. Annie, why don't you go... <clears throat> How did this all get started, Annie? So, first of all, Dracula is uniquely suited for this. It is an epistolary novel. Just highlight that little vocab word. I'm going to define it for you. Epistolary novel. What's that mean, Annie? <laughs> It means that something is told not through an overarching prose narrative, but through letters, journal entries, news articles, dispatches. So it's told through primary sources. Obviously, it's fiction, so it's not literal primary sources. But in the book, it's told as a collection of primary sources. In Dracula, you do see letters, you see articles, you see interviews, you see journal entries of the individual characters. You also see their their musings that they've written down on scraps of paper. So that's an epistolary novel. So they're not super common anymore, just because we as readers love to be thrown into the action. We love to see immediately what's going on and like how all the characters are relating together. At least that's how publishers think that we want to experience books and i have to admit like i love a good action book can as i, much can as I next person. briefly interject please do i think that there's a lot of appetite for the epistolary novel but in its modern form which is through texts and snapchats and yes. and i have seen and, and i say this because i've seen actually um like fan fiction mm -hmm. and very popular fan fiction that is just chat fic that is a good point which yes. is just group group chats it's genuinely just that engagement now um, that you mention it i think mm -hmm. the most recent epistolary novel that i read was a ya i was must have been in high school and it was like through emails and chats and texts and that's what i mean like i think that our appetite is not gone it's, no but it's not as with anything transformed i mean and the same thing like you know people are like oh people no one wants to read classics and yet here we are all fawning over dracula the, I, the other thing we talked about was that you know the the old old white guy theorem of the serial novel is dead you're such no it's not you're wrong you're it's just right. an old white man and you're out of touch yeah you just don't know that wattpad exists you don't know that wattpad exists or like unfinished chaptered works on ao3 including original fiction which or web comics or web comics which kaylee is shaking her finger aggressively I'm, at me right now i want <laughs> you guys to know i feel threatened you shouldn't i'm so sorry <laughs> you you are not the, the problem here <laughs> We've had massive, massive blowout, like viral sensations of stuff that started as web comics, like um, what was it called? Absolutely. Homestuck. Yeah. Is it's free, online, but you can also buy it in stores, and people do. Not even that. I mean, when was the last? I mean, you're not really on Twitter, but I feel like I follow live threads all the time. Like this is happening. Like that. What do you remember that one thread? I feel like it went beyond Twitter, so you might remember it. Was like. <laughs> this guy who was on a roof like in the middle where like a couple on the other end of the roof was in the middle of a breakup and he was live tweeting the breakup I and remember the thread this. took like three days oh, yes. and it was like <laughs> justice for Mary or whatever and they brought pizza and it lasted for hours it was a whole thing socks the cat started out as a twitter thread that was updated over oh, I didn't days know about this one. you I didn't know about socks the cat no. I'll so Socks the Cat is a like classic Twitter thread. It's from like 2013 about this person who found just a kitten on their way out of a baseball stadium and just kept updating the thread of like, well, he's in my house now. Guess he's staying. <laughs> We're going to look and see if we can find like every every tweet was accompanied with like a blurry photograph of Socks. Aww. And like, you know, every couple years he's like, oh, hey, this thread went viral again. Socks is good. Here's a recent picture. Mm. With just like purring on his lap. Aww, and it's just cat. like, and that was a serialized yeah. thing. I mean, it was a real like authentic thing that was happening in sure. real time. Of course. But it was literally a serialized story old people i think i think you're right and i don't mean to like They're just throw everybody into touch. a thing but people saying oh serialized stuff doesn't it does happen now it happens all the time you just don't recognize the medium because you it's have not, chosen yeah. not to because it's not in a literary magazine anyway so serials yes. and dracula mm -hmm. which is 
it's um I don't believe Dracula was originally a serial, but it was definitely no no no. It was definitely put out into a world where serials were much more common, and the epistolary novel was a part of that. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. What I what I meant to say was so Dracula is in the public domain, mm-hmm. and serials are not dead. And now we are currently getting Dracula emailed to us regularly. Annie, tell me oh, more so about good. all of this. How so, did this come about? I have to say. I think that probably Dracula is one of the few that this could have happened to in the way that it did. Because the reception is everybody knows what Dracula is about, even if they haven't read it. Everybody knows who Dracula Mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And they know more or less that everyone who Dracula encounters is going to be fighting against Dracula. No one is discovering Dracula for the first time here except for the characters in the book. (laughs) So I think that it's like probably one of the things that is so perfectly suited to this. Yeah, I mean, spoilers... Obviously, for anyone who hasn't read Dracula or who doesn't care about this, just for context, Dracula is a story about a vampire um, who lives in no. Pennsylvania. <laughs> what? It starts with a the most boring man in literature going to Dracula's house and chaos ensues. Uh, Harker, most boring man in literature, escapes and goes home and Dracula follows <laughs> Guys, him to don't, London. Guys, don't hunt Annie down. She's not trying to be mean. She's just not personally invested in Jonathan's I character. Hate... I know he's your best friend. Uh, Harker eventually goes back to London, meets up with a bunch of people, and Dracula follows him, and all these people have to hunt down and take down Dracula. A woman seductively dies, and another one is seductively threatened. That's the plot of Dracula. You're welcome. (laughs) So eventually that's what we're gonna get. It is in the public domain, uh, which means that we can pretty much do whatever we want to it. As Kaylee said, this is, like, really, like, a perfect thing for it to be done, too. And it is made by a man named Matt... Kirkland. And so there's a slate interview with him right before this iteration of Dracula Daily started. So this is going on for about two years. Before this iteration of Dracula Daily started, Slate interviewed him and he did a bio of him. Kaylee, would you like to know the other projects he has worked on before I, this? Please tell me. One is called cuneiform tablet tweets where you send him a tweet and he will translate it into cuneiform print it onto a stone tablet and then send you the stone tablet I so love you this have man. a tweet immortalized in cuneiform you know what we need to do is is translate the ingot <laughs> copper complaint so i'm sorry so he did the cuneiform tweets what else did he do um well there were other things I- i'll link the slate article he had an interview there I- again right before he launched this one so he started this back in 2021 mm-hmm. during the pandemic yep. he had been reading the book to i believe his kid and he realized that he- in the actual book it goes pov by pov it does not go by dates mm-hmm. so Reading the Dracula Daily, you're actually getting a different experience than you would by reading the book. As I said, like the first four chapters are Harker's whole journal. And then you switch over to Mina's letters and that like you're going back a month to read all of Mina's letters. And then you go like, you know, back another month or so to get to Seward's journals about Renfield. So it's a very different experience to get Dracula Daily where we've gotten Harker's diaries interspersed. You get like a letter from Mina talking to her friend Lucy. And then you're like back to Harker having the worst time ever in Dracula's castle. I'm going to try this shovel. Let's yeah, see what and then, happens. Like, hard cut to Renfield eating flies and Seward being like, huh, that's weird. I wonder why he's eating flies. Oh, he's eating spiders now. That's weird too. Why is he eating spiders? Oh God, he's eating a bird. Oh God, no! Like it's a whole thing. Um, but in the book, like all of that is much more spread out. So you're getting it in a very different experience now. So he was reading it to his kid and he was like, these are all dated. Like we could just date all these together this. and mm-hmm. like put it in chronological order. It would be a totally different experience. But you could just automate it. Like, you could just write a bot to do that. And so he did, because Matt Kirkland is my new favorite person. I love that he was just like, I'm going to try and see what happens. Absolutely. So, again, Substack uh, really started to take off in, we've talked about this before, in around 2019 and 2020. Our first episode, when was our first episode? In 2020? 2021? We talked about Substack in our first episode, and I don't remember. The first one we recorded. Oh, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. 2021. 2021. Yeah, 2021. So Substack was getting a lot of headlines around then. And obviously, you know, Matt Kirkland, man on the internet, was like, I know what Substack is. I'll just put it on Substack. So he just automated it and put it through. He is not sending us anything new. He's sending us the same stuff he sent us in 2021. But this is now 2022. God, it's 2022. Yeah. That's why I was checking. I was counting back and I was like, no, I don't oh, think it was more than last year. Anyway, so it actually started to go viral on Tumblr near the end of the first time around. And then in the middle, his subscriber numbers jumped from, I think, 1,500 to 200,000 between November 2021 and May 2022. And he was like, oh, did, did you guys want me to do this again? And they were like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. 
okay. He just like turned it back on. And he's like, okay, cool. Gotcha. His open rates, Kaylee, maybe this, this won't matter to a lot of people, but for people who work in marketing or in publishing and newsletters, his open rates are 75%. I guess that's, that's astronomical. Like that's like the number of people that actually click, open the email, click the link, the do the thing. Yeah. Like that's, that's incredible. Normal, for the record, um, I so again, I work in financial newsletters most of the time, and our open rates are 15%. It is insane to me that 75% on a free newsletter. And again, this was in May. This uh, this interview was in May. So I can't say what the, what the latest numbers are, but 75% for when it had like just started. Excuse me. When it had like just started. That's insane. Yep. Um, so honestly, shout out to Matt Kirkland. Like, you did it, bud. Killing you figured it, it out. Um, and you are obviously on more more on Tumblr than I am, Kaylee. Did you had you heard of this before? I I heard of it first on Discord when a friend of ours mutually sent it to both of us. Had you heard of it before that? Yes, mm-hmm. through Tumblr, one hundred percent. Just, just, just because, yeah, no, it was memes and uh, just. Did people. you wonder why people were suddenly memeing Dracula, or were you like, did you know about Dracula Daily specifically? Um, I'm just, like I don't know. I read the tags. Like again, you know me. Like I'll I'll open up seventy ta- ta- seventy tabs to read all the reviews for each recommended novel mm-hmm. based on my likes. So I'm gonna you went read... deep on the meta of the I, memes. <laughs> I did. I usually do. I'm we have different nerderies, but they're not dissimilar, frankly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I read the tags and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like I'm not going to reread this novel, but this is awesome. Like good for you guys. Like go go team and like yeah. you love your flies and your man trapped in a tower. <laughs> Do it, you Jonathan yeah. Harker fans. And I think that you're great. And I know that Annie is not a huge fan. But, like, consider, and I want you to consider, okay. that Jonathan Harker did, in fact, see Dracula crawl out a window and was like, I have an idea. <laughs> and then did it. And just just this, this, this middle-aged lawyer who has probably never played even rugby once in his life nope. just scaled the wall outside of this castle made it up to the bedroom i'm just saying he did his best he's more interesting than you're giving him credit for it's true he's not gonna write about his escapades fair fair that's true i will say i do understand the jonathan is best sentiment on the internet like jonathan harker doesn't really know that he's in dracula obviously no no I'm coming around to Jonathan Harker as I am forced to spend more time with him and not speed read his chapters. So I can say I am getting there. I am ambivalent about him now, I will say. So it's very interesting because I got six responses on a survey that I had sent out to Yes, tell us. Tell us us about your survey. Uh, We can come back to this later, but everybody that responded, including the reader that had already read the book, was just like the characters are a big draw and experiencing it in this way and in this fashion has really changed how I see them and not just Jonathan, Seward and Nina. Yeah, so immediately we saw for those people, again, who haven't necessarily read the book, oh, there's a lot in Jonathan Harker's journals that are sexist and racist. Yeah, there's definitely some problematic elements, 100%. You guys, it's it's a product of its times. Absolutely. Sure. He patronizes pretty much every Eastern European that he comes in contact with. There was There were discussions immediately kind of about that. And I kind of appreciate that because no one was like, you can't cancel Bram Stoker, obviously he's dead. But I appreciated that in addition to the memes, people were also talking about, you know, we do need to have these conversations because these are things that people still feel and still talk about. Which they shouldn't. And it's always like a slap in the face to get encountered with it, like in modern day. Absolutely. But that's absolutely correct. And they're like, here's an example of Jonathan Harker eating paprika and having like a fever dream because it was too spicy but there are more i mean there are even more conversations being started so there was a historical speculation not at the time but later on that stoker was a closeted gay man and obviously vampire we we literally don't have time to go into how many coded gay references are in just the existence of a vampire yep but uh, a lot of people point to that as either evidence or, or as evidence that he was a closet gay man or evidence that he grappled with his sexuality in some way. And those conversations are coming up again, mm-hmm. which I think is really good to have. I had forgotten how close Stoker was with Wilde, mm-hmm. which at least points to him being comfortable with homosexuality. And maybe Dracula was him kind of grappling with the difference between what he personally was comfortable with with his friends and what society seemed to be totally uncomfortable with. I can see that. Uh, we 
don't know. Obviously, he's he's dead, so we can't really ask him and we can't really talk about it. But I, there are so many memes. I saw a couple of them. I saw some meme compilations of this. And I mean, we cannot pretend that they aren't existing and they are delightful, aren't they? No, every single version of every popular meme, every new meme I've seen, I I can't Im- I can't really iterate the number that I've seen through Tumblr specifically. And I'm sure there are more that are specific to say Twitter and Facebook, but some of those are just going to be reposts from Tumblr, let's be real, most of them. Most of them. guys, especially on Tumblr, it's where it went viral. Like the number of memes and places that people have grabbed around. their iconic Jonathan Harker love the love of Jonathan Harker, yeah. I, I think one of my favorites is is like, because you know, like everything, this is a vampire book. Like there's supernatural mm-hmm. shit happening. Jonathan doesn't know what's going on. Weird no, stuff. No, he stuff. does and not. He's, he seems to be oddly okay with it. He's like, fine. He's just like, oh yeah, this is just a vibe. I guess this is just what Hungarian counts do. <laughs> But the right. thing that the, one of my favorite things is just like the people that latched in the fandom on the fact that Hungarian paprika is fucking spicy. Like the memes that came out of that specifically made me laugh so hard. He had severe white boy tongue, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Like that's like. I've talked to uh, some of my British friends, and so she's dealing with the melting pot, shall we say, and just the idea that England fought for like a thousand years to, to take on the spice trade, and then decided it didn't like any of the spices. And she's just depressed. One of my favorite memes that I saw was how, like, so Harker shows up and Dracula's there. Or, like, Dracula's planning for Harker's arrival. And he turns to his wives and is like, okay, we're going to have to pretend to be real people, which means someone's got to clean up. Someone's got to do the dishes. Someone's got to cook. And they were all like, it won't be me. And he was like, oh, I, I guess I got to do it. Because you never hear about the wives doing it. Nope. It's just all of them being like, okay, have fun with that. Nope, you wanted this. <laughs> You wanted this weird English lawyer in our house. You deal with him. <laughs> you know what's really funny is like they definitely were like into Jonathan too, but I don't know. It was like definitely a vibe of, eh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, they were trolling. I felt they were definitely like for again for those who haven't read Dracula. There's a part it where Harker is stuck in Dracula's castle where he encounters Dracula's three wives who are bloodthirsty vampires, but they are kind of like trolling him. Like I don't think that they were going to eat him ever. I think that they knew that he was just, like, wandering around. He shouldn't have been. They were just kind of trying to scare him. I don't know. I, I feel like they had exactly one other person for how how long. And Jonathan, okay, again, setting aside the fact that he's a, a racist jerk, unintentionally, I would imagine. Maybe a little bit intentionally, but I don't know that it was entirely the, the I don't think the author processed social justice guy. So I don't think it was really his full purview just think it was like this is just the typical english dude and they were trapped themselves true yes i we don't really go into the wives histories but i cannot imagine that it was an entirely consensual relationship yeah. because they were you know dead anyway tell us more uh what what other types of memes we've talked about uh, all the iterations of the uh harker as bestie memes what else is there <laughs> so okay yes the memes are wonderful but i was actually more interested in kind of approaching this from a you as a like you the general you not you as a specific you but like the the reader like how did you why did you try you know choose to engage with this like how did you like this had had you read the book before like how are you finding uh is it different how are you finding the the format and the content and the characters and you know stuff like that so i actually sent out a survey on into the wilds of of home grounds tumblr and i actually had some some people that were responding and i i deeply appreciate it thank you so much so i definitely was again not surprising that i did get all Tumblr responses because that's where I posted my stuff. Everybody that responded except for the sixth one of them said that they learned about it just through Tumblr generically. And the last person said that they learned about it from a friend. So it Mm -hmm. could have been through Tumblr, but like, who knows? I mean, it could have been more directly. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. The person who um, said that they learned about it through their friend actually was the only person out of the six people that responded that had read Dracula before. Mm-hmm. So everybody, interesting. Yeah. So I was I I was very interested in that. So that particular um respondent, respondee, that responder. person. Yeah, responder. Wazzle, 
was the requested uh, name, had said that they they had read Dracula before, that they were big fa- they were fans, but that it, mm-hmm. reading Dracula daily had definitely transformed their understanding and enjoyment of the book. The other uh, people that had responded, the other responders, had not which was so fascinating. Three of them, I think, said that it was on their list, but all of them later said that just the format of the serial and having it come in chunks and like daily bite-sized bits was so much less intimidating than a full-on classical quote-unquote novel. That yeah, they, and they were there, really enjoying it. Sorry to interrupt, but there are like days where you don't get anything because just nothing's happening mm-hmm. in the journals or the letters or the diaries or anything. So and it's not wrong that you're not reading this this book. Yeah, because that's not how and you're supposed the, to be reading it. And some of the entries are like a paragraph long, so you get like a day. Like the other day, Renfield was eating a cat. Sorry, everybody, spoilers. And it was just like a paragraph from Seward being like, "Huh, that's weird. He ate a cat." And you're like, "Seward, stop! Close his window! What are you doing, Seward? Why is he still able to get to these things? How is he getting?" the animals sword <laughs> anyway but yeah so but it was like a paragraph and it was it, like no pressure no like major obligation to read it i knew that i could read it whenever it doesn't feel like reading a classic quote unquote nope. it's so much more approachable and it, it is. feels it feels more intimate and yes, like, that's the, that's a good way to put it yes that's absolutely. the experience 100 that like the people that responded seem to be communicating and caveat of course nobody is like coming to dracula totally uninitiated like even if you didn't read even if you didn't read anything even if you didn't watch anything you've seen the shit costumes at the halloween superstores like you have some cultural context or you've you've seen like the monster movies and stuff you know you've got something because dracula is just a massive cultural phenomenon so everybody's not totally unaware but like even but for these people that did have the cultural context the the characters in general like are totally like fresh even the ones like that they had kind of had before but i think that's like the biggest draw which is why i was just like be careful like don't like be rude to anybody like these are their their new faves or whatever they're learning and uh experiencing everything for the first time and you're allowed to like i think that's awesome but that's definitely like even the people like even wazel who had read it before like it was like i've definitely like my understanding of the characters and like like processing all of this has changed because of the new format Mm -hmm. um i've just gotten a much greater insight into them and like learned sure like more which i thought that was like super cool so i also was curious about if the format had or just having this new like having this coming to them daily and having them like consume it was that changed anything for them so for some of them no they were daily readers but two of them one was like they had categorized themselves as a regular reader but like weekly one of them was more of a monthly reader, um, so more casual, I guess. Both of them said that this had been like a really good sort of jump point getting back into it. Wasn't? Getting back into, sorry, getting reading back into more reading in general? In general. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. I thought that was super cool. And like, I want to say Wazel maybe started buying more hard media again, physical copies. Wow. And the other one who was, I think, chosen to remain anonymous wanted to just generally read more like i thought they were like more of a weekly reader and they're like yeah i just want to read a lot more now their whole thing i think with the serial i think and speaking of just the intimate experience and how you re-engage with media it's you engage with fandom and media differently when you have a space between things chapters content and that's what fandom does like the traditional like tv experience for cable where you have an episode come out and then you wait a week and then another episode comes out and it continues like that people like traditionally would spend that week talking about the thing and and musing and thinking about things and writing about what could happen interesting about ways that episode could have gone differently or whatever that is a fascinating theory. I'm going to write that down. We've talked about a little bit about how good the media is, maybe, per se, but also I do think that has something to do with it. But, like, I think that there's a reason that behemoths like Disney are doing the drip. Yeah, absolutely. We've gone back to, from binging, back to weekly releases. Keeps and the- I wonder what the data is behind that. I think that'll be really interesting for our episode on yeah, yeah. what IP totally inspires fandom, yeah. for sure. So, um... Yeah, I think that's just something that's fascinating. And I think that really bears out like in stuff like this, um, Mm -hmm. specifically. And I think that that's totally bears on one of the other conversations that I've seen is this is really bringing to the fore 
what adaptations of Dracula have gotten wrong. People are able to sit with the characters now and able to see, you know, much more about Harker. And that's one of the issues that I've always had with Harker in representations. It's Keanu Reeves or something. When the Harker character is this dopey British dude who can't handle paprika, you know? And maybe that's part of my issue with Harker as a character is because he gets like lifted up because he is the first person that encounters Dracula. But he is not the hero of the story. The hero of the story is Mina and Van Helsing. And people don't really want to... But I mean, there's a reason that Van Helsing has been such a cultural touchstone as well. But I don't think that it necessarily... That Harker necessarily has been as accurately portrayed in media as he necessarily should have been with the way that Stoker wrote him, for sure. Um, I could definitely see that. I mean, they're just, a, I mean, that was, they, I don't even think that Dracula has, has been misrepresented. For sure. 100%. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's one of the most I think that's one of the, one of the conversations that we're going to see more of as we go along, as we kind of get past mm-hmm. the, like, the problematic bits of, yes. of, of the beginning. And I think that's a good thing, because one of the ways that I think classic literature really is relevant today is by having these conversations about things that were happening back then that are also happening now, mm-hmm. and how we can contextualize much more easily when something we can see is, like, wrong and say, this is also happening today in this context, also wrong. I think that's one of the great strengths of literature. Oh, no, I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. And I think that one of the values in in reading in general is you, you can definitely love something and just be like, hey, you know, this thing is, here's the places that it could have, that we as a people weren't doing well, and now we're trying to do better. And here are ways to look at it and examine it. I think that's absolutely correct. Okay, so yeah. I just want to do a general shout out to everyone who responded. Yes, um, thank you so much. Yeah. So I, uh, so Ninoy, if I got your name wrong, I'm really sorry. I don't know. You didn't give me pronunciation guidelines. I apologize. Uh, Wazzle, five turtle ducks in a trench coat. Yes. Dylan and Kat, who are all interested in the shout outs. Um, also, they specifically, I have a couple recommendations for people yes, who are interested. Absolutely. So for anyone who's already experiencing Dracula daily and is just generally vibing and liking it a lot, uh, Ninoy wanted to wrap Frankenstein Weekly. And uh, Les Mis Daily, which are coming out next year. Um, and then also uh, shout outs to, uh, from Wazzle to The Owl House and um, Infinity Train. Okay, what are those? Um, so they're both animated and they're not serials other than in that they're animated episodes. Like they're TV shows? Yeah, they're TV shows. Okay. So they come out in serial form. But um, they're just generally speaking very good. What that. platform are they on? So, um, That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. So, and we will absolutely put those in the show notes. Deeply appreciate it. Yes, that, that, that is absolutely correct. So maybe a little more coherently there, but we'll definitely, definitely rep those. Uh, but for other uh, people that are wanting the serials, we do have some, some people coming up next year. So mm-hmm. that's, yeah. yeah. Um, it's really interesting that you said Frankenstein Daily because Kirkland- it's Frankenstein spe- Weekly. Sorry, Frankenstein Weekly, because Kirkland specifically said that he didn't want to do Frankenstein Weekly, even though it has a similar like chronological thing because the chapters are so long he said that it wouldn't work in his opinion as well so i'm glad that someone took that idea and still ran with it I it should be interesting to see yeah i'd yeah. love to see how it's going to shake out like for sure and so one of the other things that i thought was really fun which was the social aspect so um one of the responders said that the social aspect it was like a book club without any of the stress of having to go to a book club or necessarily engage with some of the people that you don't super agree with, that that was such a vibe for enjoying. Yeah. Like a shared experience is important for sure right. as a human. Thanks, Dylan, for putting that into words, because it was definitely one of the things that I was observing. You're absolutely correct. That is definitely the vibe. Experiencing a book club vibe, but in your own time and space, on your own terms, that is a really, yeah. You're right. I've never articulated that before, but that is probably one of the main reasons I never really liked book clubs. Because, like, you have to be somewhere mm-hmm. every week with, like, a, you know, deviled egg situation <laughs> and, like, a book that you hated. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I did want to talk about Kaylee. What would you like to see in serialized format? If we think about public domain books that you liked or maybe didn't like, mm-hmm. but maybe want to experience in a serialized format, seeing how the serialized format is makes Dracula so different. What would you like to see? I feel like this is like such a such a gotcha right now because it recently came into the the public domain and people jumped on it and wrote sequels. But like The Great Gatsby mm-hmm. is you could chunk it out in days. Like Nick 
Really? Experiences the day okay. is pretty, pretty, regu- like, the way that it's written. So I've never read The Great Gatsby. Is it Nick's journal? No, it's it's a narrative, okay. but I feel like you could still make it work for okay. the most part. Um, it is it is a very straightforward narrative, in my opinion, um, and that I feel like it could be chunked out. It's not epistolary by any means, but I feel like you could definitely do it. So I, I loved it. I felt really bad reading later that F. Scott Fitzgerald had to tone down some of the homosexual tones, like, I think. So that would be a great... I think experience for people. I think yeah. a lot of the original serials, the Charles Dickens stuff, mm, like 100%. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just OG, like 100% straightforward. I, I would have to go in. I don't think all of the short stories or full on novels for like Sherlock Holmes would come across the same, but that would be, I would be very interested to find which ones would work because it's a mystery. And I think that people engaging with that on a serial level where it's they're- It's a journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that would be, I think that Sorry people would like you, but... that. Those would be like such such interesting ways to engage with the content again and refresh it and like you are as a person are experiencing it and processing it and playing with it in your head what about you annie I mean, my favorite classic novel is Picture of Dorian Gray. Oh, that'd be a good one. It's not epistolary either. My favorite, I just love it so much. And his descent into madness is just beautifully chronicled and I would love to see it in like a like a again like a journey format of him going from this just like beautiful child to a cynical monster yeah it was a, um, an awful genuine monster. horribly yeah. violent murderer uh spoilers for anyone who hasn't read dorian gray but i mean oscar wilde also did a ton of short stories it would be really cool to have some of his short stories his plays I will forever be a fan of the importance of being earnest. Um, That's so good. I saw that. It was, well, so, so fun. So I've never seen it. I've never seen it actually played. I've only ever read it, but I was so affected by it. It was so wonderful. However you engage with your content is the right way to engage with your content. And however you you like your characters or your media is totally fair. Just be open to discussions sometimes, you know, especially with, I don't even want to say with older literature, um, with literature, it, it can definitely put us in a position where to examine like our prejudices, our biases, stuff that we may not have seen about ourselves. But like, there's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing bad as long as you're not using your position of of privilege whatever privilege you might have to bury and beat down on people that are are asking you to do better i just you know listen listen to the voices that are speaking to you and, and engage in that conversation where appropriate i think that that's critical to to growth as a as a people Thank you so much for listening. You can find our link tree wherever you found this podcast. And we have a new, you have a fresh new way to support us. Uh, you can donate or subscribe through our new Kofi, where you can buy us a coffee. We um, had to look that up several times to make sure we were <laughs> pronouncing it correctly. But it's really not intuitive. It is not. No, it's, it's ko dash fi dot com and then slash ink sync podcast. But you don't have to remember that. It's on our link tree, which is wherever you found this podcast. <laughs> you can just use the tip jar. It goes there. Yes. yes any, anything you want to do. You can see on our Kofi page that we do have costs for the podcast, about 40 bucks a year. Um, and you can help us cover those costs. Or you can just buy us a coffee because you like us. Um, and I like us. And we like coffee. And that's cool. Speaking of absolutely nothing to do with anything that we're talking about later. I'm I'm unpacking at my new house, so I've been looking up ways to avoid that for things that I'm doing in the future. Moles. We have a mole potential issue in our yard. Like and a spy or a rodent? I'm pretty sure he's like Perry the platypus and that he's both. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because he's got a little hat. <laughs> um, a platypus? Perry the platypus? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Good old no, dude. you're not. I'm not. That's true. She's right. She saw me laughing and smiling. She knows me. So I, I looked up and apparently moles detest coffee. Really? So you can use your old coffee grounds. You like basically just... As like mole repellent? Yeah, they hate the smell of coffee. So you like put the old coffee grounds in the holes and eventually they'll they'll be driven out of it. And then you can like just water your lawn <laughs> with water that's been cycled through the coffee grounds like once a month <laughs> as just like a I an anti-mole this. talisman. Wow. But does it work on spies? 
Um, I'm pretty sure it, it may draw spies closer. Mm. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Sure, sure. Well, so, but if this mole is also a spy. Mm-hmm. So Marvin the mole. I don't know. You're right. I got to think this through some more. I think you do. Um, and in the meantime, buy us a coffee to keep the moles away from Kaylee's house. Yeah, guys, I need, I need your help. <laughs> Only you can help prevent mole infestations. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.